who are interested in how things enter cells and how they get out. Imagine that you can make bubbles uh, into the cell. So imagine then that the bubble, as it's forming, entraps things that were outside from very large objects, like a virus, to very small objects, like iron. The surface around a cell is made of a membrane. So this is what we need to deform to make a bubble. When you do this, you need to have scaffold. You can think of it as a basket weaving around the bubble. So we're interested in how that works and what's the molecular basis for that process. So in this particular set of experiments, we're looking at the first five seconds in the life of these bubbles. So the assumption was that you had a sequential set of events, highly ordered, very deterministic. As it turns out, that's not the case. And I think that's very exciting. So we have used a special technique to see the real reaction. So it's not that we're just averaging what happened in a cell. We're looking at the actual molecule that arrived to the site and location where it's working. And then we use predictive statistical modeling to understand what we were observing. As it turns out, the process happens randomly. There are two molecules that are very important. The first is clathrin. The second is AP2, which simply means adapter protein number two. So what we have uncovered is that the adapters are colliding with the membrane. They stay there for a very, very short time. This is just milliseconds. But if you happen to have the luck that at least two of those adapters arrive to the membrane at the right time and at the right place, they grab a clathrin. And now it can stay there for a few seconds. If you're patient enough, now another clathrin that was floating collides with that clathrin already in the membrane. And that also remains stationary for a fraction of a second. Again, if you're lucky and there are other adapters that were independently colliding with the membrane and they're close by, they get also entrapped. So if all these things happen, this is now the beginning of the bubble. So what is the significance of this? I always thought that there were very strong interactions or reasonably strong interactions inside the cell and everything would go step by step in a highly ordered, ordered way. I am not so sure that that's the case anymore. I think that most of the interactions that happen are fairly weak. So that gives the system flexibility. You have many, many interactions that are happening that are futile. They're just simply abort. A small set, however, will survive. Also, it implies that you don't have to necessarily use exactly the same molecules as partners. You can also use other molecules that maybe bind a little bit weaker. This in my mind, allows you to think globally on how to, for example, find a drug that would block a particular molecule that one would imagine is important to disease. It's not evident anymore that just by hitting this particular molecule, you will get the perfect solution. You have to be quite careful if you have other components that can come in and replace the one that failed. So there's a whole range of uh, factors that you need to include.